Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for participating in the Pebbles of Hope inaugural webinar series commemorating National Prematurity Awareness Month. Many of you, many of you have already signed up for multiple sessions, um, but for those of you that don't know, we will be hosting four sessions throughout the month of November, all covering topics related to preemie nutrition, and this is the first session. Um, the Pebbles of Hope mission is to help premature babies thrive through parent education, and the webinar series is the first step towards achieving that goal. To learn more about the organization and our activities, please visit our website at www.pebblesofhope.org. We really appreciate your support, and we hope that you will find this an informative session. I'm delighted to introduce to you our speaker for today. Nancy Clark is an international board certified lactation consultant. She's a member of the International Lactation Consultant Association, the ILCA, and a preceptor for the International Board of Lactation Consultant Examiners. She volunteers her time on the program board for the DC area March of Dimes. Nancy specializes in the near-term or premature newborn and complex lactation issues. For over 30 years, Nancy has been promoting, supporting, and educating new mothers, families, and professionals about breastfeeding by developing professional care plans, educational models, and standards of care education and mentoring new professionals in the field. She is a published author and consultant for Childbirth Graphics, Inc., and Lactation Education Resources, formerly the Georgetown University LC Training Program, and a frequent lecturer in the D.C. area. Before we get started, I just wanted to cover a couple of housekeeping matters. All attendees will be muted for the duration of the session, but any time during or after the presentation, you can submit a question by typing it into the chat box on your screen. You will also see um, a download link for the presentation there as well. After the session, I will read out the questions that you submit to Nancy, who will answer them as time allows, one by one. Nancy has also generously agreed to answer any remaining questions after the session if we run out of time. Those answers will be written and emailed out to all of the attendees following today's session. With that, I will hand it over to Nancy. Thank you for inviting me to speak about breastfeeding success with your preemie. Today we will talk about several topics, methods for establishing milk supply, how a baby learns to suck, and transition to normal breastfeeding. With every preemie birth, early birth, it's often an unplanned and unexpected event. Most of you are in shock and not ready for an early baby. Today babies are being born and surviving as young as 25 weeks gestation and weighing less than a pound. Prematurity ranges from 25 weeks gestation to 37 weeks, with the 34 to 37 weeker in a special category known as the preterm infant. Each of these gestational age babies presents its own unique challenges to breastfeeding and the family. Sometimes the preemies are admitted to a needle natal intensive care unit or a NICU and often separated from mother and family. Ideally, the mother and family live nearby so that you can do lots of frequent visits and take part in your baby's care. Mothers may also have prenatal or postnatal complications that affect uh, breastfeeding success with your preemie. Prenatal complications may include multiples, advanced maternal age, comorbidity, or chronic diseases prior to pregnancy. Some of the postpartum complications that affect breastfeeding and milk supply are high blood pressure, postpartum preeclampsia, postpartum hemorrhage. Mothers and babies and families are also coping with the vulnerability of the infant. The baby's overall well-being may be a touch-and-go situation for days, for hours. As a rule of thumb, the more uh, younger the baby, the more premature the baby, especially our micro preemies, the more complex the medical issues arise every day and every hour until the baby is stable. This definitely does provide a lot of stress for the mother and her family. Mother may also be included to establish and maintain lactation for several weeks before the infant can come to breast. Especially when the baby is hospitalized for many months, the mother may have to return to work and maintain lactation and trying to breastfeed 
before the baby is discharged. Preemies present these unique challenges. A simple understanding is that preterm infants compared to term infants have maturity dependent physiological and metabolical differences that require integration of systems. Compared to a term infant, preterm infants might both have these issues and they don't mature in sync. For example, a 34-weeker may need minimal respiratory support, but might, may not be able to maintain his or her body temperature out of the isolate. Parents find it really hard to understand that this maturity does not develop along the same timeline as that of a term infant. Babies that are born early do not mature in days the same as a term infant. If you have a one-month-old 33-weeker, this baby does not have the same development as a one-month-old term newborn, and she may mature her different systems at different rates, neurological, metabolic, and suck. With breastfeeding, we are talking about the suck. This maturity does not develop along the same timeline as the term infant. This includes the development of the ability to root, suck, swallow, breathe, and repeat this pattern to complete the breastfeeding. Baby must also have the stamina to complete this breastfeeding pattern on their own to fully breastfeed without support. The biggest help you can do as mom is to, for breastfeeding success, is to initiate a good milk supply. Surrounding yourself with support, family and friends, medical staff, social workers, peer counselors, the March of Dimes, Mothers of Multiples. At the bottom of the screen, you can see two websites to find a local lactation consultant that's board certified who has experience with preterm babies. Sometimes moms keep a notebook, and I highly recommend this, that you write things down, the questions to ask the doctors, clarification, your feelings, a pump log, so you can figure out how much milk you're making and what are your challenges to doing that. There's a very steep learning curve for the entire family, especially if the baby is admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit. So why should we bother with breast milk? I want you to think of breast milk as a medicine. It has bioactive factors that fight bacteria and viruses for your baby. Your mature antibodies, which are present in your unique milk, may fight specific viruses or bacteria that is harmful to specifically to your baby. Your expressed milk compared to formula becomes readily digestible with more nutrients that are bioavailable to baby. So babies that are breastfed or, or breastfed or fed breast milk actually grow better, better than other babies who are totally on formula. We also know that breast milk is active in the sense that it's a growing fluid with active, specific gastrointestinal functions that is not duplicated in formula. These specific uh, gastrointestinal functions paint the baby's gut to protect the baby from harmful pathogens. This is really important so that we prevent future infections for the baby. Recent research has also told us that especially with the early preterm infant, they have been shown to have greater improved cognitive and motor development if they are breast milk fed. Think of your breast milk as the ultimate brain food. Even mothers of early premature babies as young as 25 weeks gestation can make breast milk. Mammary tissue responds to progesterone during pregnancy as early as 18 weeks gestation. To start making milk, you need birth, and then you need breast and nipple stimulation, either from the baby or from a pump. Mothers have a very special role in caring for the baby at this point, and this helps you feel better about the whole experience. You may be sad that you had a new baby very early, you may be unprepared for this, but this ability to make that special milk for your baby is something that you treasure. When staff can meet most of your baby's needs, 
especially in a neonatal intensive care unit. Remember, only you as mom can produce milk for your baby. This is often very comforting in the complex world of a NICU preemie. Your first bond with your baby, besides touching your baby, is the continuation of nourishing her. You started in utero, and now out of utero, you are continuing this role as providing the breast. So let's talk about tips to establish milk supply. Take it one step at a time. My experience has shown that if you start with the small picture and not stress over the big one about how much milk I'm going to make a month from now, two months from now, or three months from now, you'll have a better outlook on getting started. Start small, hand expression of colostrum, which will be collected and given to your baby. If you have an older preterm baby, this baby can be teaspoon uh, fed colostrum. Just ask the staff how to do this. Ideally, it's nice to start with a hospital grade pump once that you are stable. Elicit family support so that they can put together a system, especially if you are having trouble recovering from the birth. Pump at your baby's bedside when you are in the NICU. Be an advocate for skin to skin. Babies even on respirators, CPAP or oxygen, can be put skin to skin. This means that baby is put prone, wearing only a diaper, on mom's naked chest. Baby stabilizes, stays warm, they cover the baby with a blanket, and some of our micro preemies are even covered with a dark cloth. And mom rests with the baby for a minimum of a half hour to an hour. Baby lungs grow faster, they stabilize, they coordinate their breathing, breathing with mom's heart rate and her breathing, and mom relaxes. In the end, she makes more milk. Maximizing milk production. Set up a schedule for routine milk expression. Like when you're breastfeeding any baby, your, ba your body gets into a rhythm of when to produce milk. Ideally, you should have six pumping sessions. These are double pumping at the same time, both breast, in 24 hours. Non-pumping intervals should not be more than six hours. We know that sleep really helps. So try to schedule your uh, milk expression so that you have one six-hour stretch of sleep to help maintain this production. Schedule pr pumping is when prolactin and the milk-making hormone are highest usually late at night, and at least once during the evening, and during the night once, and then in the early a.m. The most important piece of advice I can give you is rent a hospital-grade pump. This pump is designed for clinical use, for establishing and maintaining a milk supply when the baby is not at breast. The insurance-provided pumps today are retail pumps. This means they are used for occasional use only, pumping two to three times a day. They are not meant to make long-term supply. Again, check with your lactation consultant in the hospital or your nurse to make sure you have the right pumping kit, that the flanges fit you correctly, and that you know how to use your pump. Incorrect fit can cause nipple or breast damage, poor milk transfers, plug ducts, or breast infections. None of what you need at this time. continuing to make more milk, review your medications or any supplements that you're on, like any herbs, with your nurse, your physicians. Most um, medications are compatible with breastfeeding. I'll start with hand expression and massage before pumping, and at least once more during the pumping session. You will yield more milk. You can view the video below to talk to actually see a pumping session with breast massage. Strategize ways to combine pumping with your lifestyle. This is really important. Hospital grade pumps at work are essential. Visit your baby, do lots of skin to skin, and attempts at breastfeeding. Even if the baby is not doing effective breastfeeding, the baby licking and nuzzling the breast promotes, promotes milk making hormones, lots of bonding and relaxation. This increases your letdown and also is a teaching and learning experience for the baby. 
Let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Drink to thirst. You don't have to force yourself to drink. You don't want to be overhydrated. Avoid excessive caffeine or alcohol. And if you have a very small infant, discuss with your neonatologist if you should be drinking any caffeine or alcohol. Continue prenatal vitamins or iron as prescribed by your physician. Eating a balanced diet to include protein, vegetables. We know that oatmeal and brewer's yeast help with milk production. And I'd like to recommend smoothies. a combination of a whey product, sometimes yogurts, um, milk, fruit, and they're easily mixed up and transportable. It is something that your family can do for you. Galactagogues are herbal supplements that do support milk supply. One of the most common is fenugreek, malunge, and a combination tincture in the mother love products or mother milk tea. Always discuss what your, these supplements with your physician and recommendations from your lactation consultant. You can also take prescriptive drugs. They are prescribed by the OB to stimulate prolactin to increase milk supply. The most commonly used drugs here are Reglan and Domperidone. Each of these has side effects, so again, discuss their use, the pros and cons with your physician. Importantly, we have to know as moms how to learn to how this baby learns to suck at the breast. Breast effectively is an active skill of rooting and latching onto the breast. This pattern is sucking, swallowing, and then breathing. Preemies are often consistently inconsistent. Some will do effective breast sucks with milk expressions, while others will only do one part of the pattern, like latching. Some forget the sequence or just lose stamina. Establishing supply is the key factor here. You can assist the baby with um, breast compressions. Basically, you're pushing milk into the baby. Think of all your breastfeeding attempts as practice. The baby's learning to latch, do a little bit of jaw compression with a vacuum and eventually nor normalize the pattern of sucking, swallowing, breathing, and repeating the pattern until they become effective breastfeeders. Term babies are pre-wired to wake for feeds and breastfeed with consecutive sucks and repeating this pattern to become the effective feeding. Most preemies usually achieve this maturation at about 36 to 37 weeks gestation. At that point, we can take away the support of pumping and um, bottle feeding. This would be a really good time that you would schedule an evaluation with a board-certified lactation consultant so that she can evaluate whether the baby can effectively transfer milk without tiring them out. Preemies take some small and big steps to breastfeed. As I said, they could take a couple of steps forward and one back, and each day is different. Hand, easy hand expression, dripping milk into their mouth, helping with the letdown, and letting the baby lick and nuzzle at the breast really does help uh, establish your abundant milk supply. Again, advocating for early and frequent skin to skin. The baby starts to be aware of what you smell like. They start to lick and nuzzle. Maternal milk making hormones increase, and mom and baby are definitely happy. It is often hard for parents and moms to realize that the baby is very stable and growing, but they're learning to mature at their own rate and their own way to suck. 35 to 36 weekers start to suck strong and effectively on breast and bottle, but may often have uncoordinated suck or stamina. Even some 37 weekers I've worked with can't quite get the pattern together. Practice time is essential. Tasting mom and getting equipment with doing small sucking bursts at the breast. Babies can come to breast in many situations. An infant on oxygen can go to the breast just licking and nuzzling and maybe latching on, following by a sucking burst. This mother has pre-expressed some milk and she's molding the breast to fit into the baby's mouth. This is a very easy technique to use to start with breastfeeding. Babies also are bottle fed in the NICU or early on, even when you're home and you're not fully breastfeeding. 
Have someone teach you pace bottle feeding. What this means, it allows the baby to learn a better breastfeeding pattern of suck, swallow, and breathing at their own pace. Flat, fast flow nipples often overwhelm the preemie and can cause them to become um, very aggravated and very um, making feeding um, on the bottle a very unpleasant experience. It increases the risk of aspiration and babies are having trouble coordinating the suck, swallow, and breathing pattern that we would like them to mimic at breast. You want to hold your body ha bottle hard in the infant's mouth and pace the feeding so the baby can do its own compressions and self-regulation. Again, have someone help work with you before you leave the hospital so that you understand this skill and then teach it to all the family members or your care providers that are helping you with this baby. Infants with a feeding tube can also go to practice latch and beginning to suck and babies on oxygen and other situations. Again, these are learning situations where the baby is taking their time to become acquainted with mom and learn the sucking pattern. By compressing your breast at this time, as baby starts to suckle, you can get droplets of your precious milk into your baby. And it's also incentive for them to swallow and repeat the pattern of suck, swallow, and breathe. Some babies need extra support to transition to breast and will use special tools. One of these is the Haberman feeder. It's used with babies with a weak suck, cleft lip or palate, or one of the other clefts, of just the lip or a palate, or a slow lethargic feeder. The Haberman allows you to gently push milk into the baby's mouth while the baby sucks. Food is regulated by a special valve so the baby is not overwhelmed with a large amount of milk that they're trying to swallow. Special preemie nipples, like this red one on the left, have a faster flow for infants that tire easy, but are just beginning to learn to suck. Transition to slow flow nipples before the baby is discharged will help the baby to learn uh, to do a breast suck. Lactation consultants can also help with this transition from bottle feed to breastfeeding. Some infants may need extra breastfeeding tools to help them with their feeds. One is a supplemental nursing system. There are two out there, one made by Medella and the other one made by Lactaid. These systems deliver milk to the baby at the breast via a tube. The baby must be able to sustain a latch and do some sucking. A lactation consultants should facilitate the use of so the infant learns an effective breast suck not a bottle feeding straw suck on mom's nipple. Sometimes if the tube is not placed correctly or the flow is too uh, fast, the baby will um, pull off and just uh, sustain a bottle suck on mom. And this doesn't help us with learning breastfeeding. The SNS systems or the lac A can also be used with babies who do a correct breast suck and moms have a low milk supply. Obviously, suck orientation at the breast saves time and energy for both mother and baby. Nipple shields. They're often used to assist with latch on and provide st stability and stimulation for the infant to continue to suck. When breastfeeding, a baby creates two seals, one with their lips and one with her tongue under the nipple and the breast. The suck keeps the breast in the baby's mouth and pulls the milk down to the back of the throat so the baby can swallow. Full-term babies are wired to do this, but the near-term and preemie baby may latch, but need more stimulation to suck. When the palate or the roof of the mouth is stimulated with the baby, for the baby, the baby starts to suck. The nipple shield provides this stability and stimulation. So as mom puts the breast in the mouth or tips the breast up to the top of the mouth so it, it stimulates the palate, the baby starts to suck. For milk to transfer through the nipple shield, the infant must still be able to do strong breast compressions. But it is a learning experience. I call it training wheels. With an abundant milk supply, mom may let down milk into the shield, and this encourages babies to suck. Think of this as a learning experience. Please make sure that you're using the correct size for a nipple shield and that the baby is doing um, breast suck at the, nip, at, the, at the breast with the shield versus a bottle suck. Uh, this can be assisted with your nurse or your lactation consultant. 
either in hospital or out of hospital. Before you leave the hospital, practice as much as you possibly can. You want to learn the signs of effective milk transfer. Uh, the staff can do a before feeding and after feeding weight, and this measures the amount of milk uh, transferred. Make sure you have a discharge feeding plan so you know how often babies should go to breast, whether or not you need to pump to maintain supply until baby learns to suck effectively, or you need to supplement the baby with specialized um, extra calorie formula. For mom and baby, it does take time to learn the steps to exclusive breastfeeding. I like to think about it as a dance with mom and baby. And like with any dancing partner, it takes time to learn the steps. Maintaining a, a good milk supply. And remember, if you can't maintain a full supply, any amount of breast milk, try to be positive. Babies mature at their own rate to sucking on the breast. And sometimes they surprise you. All of a sudden, they turn around one day and they do four consistent feedings. Working with a feeding specialist or a speech language pathologist or a lactation consultant will be special people to help you evaluate the baby's ability to breastfeed. Start with a workable care plan. You may have other children at home. You may still be recovering from postpartum complications. Lots of breastfeeding practice or even partial breastfeeding and supplementation with pumping is often a very common pattern. The key word is workable, making sure that you can sustain um, making milk while this baby is learning to suck. Feeding ability is inconsistent. Try to be patient. <coughs> Side attention baby is breastfeeding well. The baby breaks, wakes for feeding and stays awake long enough to breastfeed. This is a repeated pattern of suck, swallow, and breathe. The breast should feel soft after feeding and the baby should look satisfied. Again, the baby has to root, latch so the mother feels a pull, starts sucking in short bursts, and then repeats the longer bursts with repeated swallows. Your baby has an average weight gain for a healthy breastfed baby of six to eight ounces per week. Ask your doctor about what the expected weight gain for your baby. You may be going to the physician once a week so that they know that the baby is gaining weight and that they are monitoring your baby's overall well-being. You may invest yourself in a digital scale so that you can do some weekly weight checks. I don't recommend that you do pre and post weighs for every until you're comfortable that you think the baby is transferring milk and then come up with a care plan that's working with you. This would be a good time to have a visit with a lactation consultant so that she can organize your day, help you with your breastfeeding management and evaluate with you so that you understand that your baby is sucking correctly at the breast. These care plans are fluid too as the baby matures and the baby does uh, different types of breastfeeding sucks and then can become fully breastfed, you do need to revise the care plan. I wish you breastfeeding success. All premiums present a set of challenging steps in the establishment of breastfeeding, whether they are 25 weekers, whether they are small multiples, or whether it's a 37 weeker who doesn't quite have it together. Whether you just provide breast milk, do partial breastfeeding, or grow to fully breastfeed, remember you are a success, giving a most precious gift to your child, yourself, and your breast milk. If you would like to contact me directly, you may go to the website for my practice, which is in Fairfax City in Northern Virginia, at www.nvlcbaby. Dot com, or you can email me directly at the chat box on the side of your screen. 
Um, I will start off with a couple of questions of my own. Um, the first question that I have is, you know, we all know that, um, you know, the hind milk is, is very important for the baby and, um, you know, been told that, you know, to complete breastfeeding on, on the breast, you know, to make sure that the baby gets the hind milk. However, I also know that, um, you know, if you don't uh, stimulate the breast enough that, um, you know, you uh, it could cause a decrease in milk supply. So is it better to, um, if the baby, you know, doesn't have a huge appetite, um, is it better to to um, allow the baby to complete just one breast um, in a feeding and, and not suck on the second breast, or is it better to make sure that the baby um, actually sucks on both breasts so that you know you, you maintain um, a healthy milk supply on both breasts? High milk does have um, more fat for the baby during the feeding. Um, a lot depends on how well the baby effectively feeds. If that literally only has the stamina to complete breastfeeding on one breast, then this would be a good time to start the baby feeding on that breast, take them off, stimulate, and then put the baby back on the same breast. If the mother needs the support of um, breast stimulation, then she may have to pump the other breast to maintain milk supply. Remember that the high milk never disappears, the fatty milk. So if the baby doesn't get it with one feeding, they'll get it with another. If you are exclusively pumping for a while, talk to your neonatologist or your NICU nutritionist and see if they want to use your fatty milk, which rises to the top of the bottle, as the supplement or the, um, the extra calories for your baby's feedings. Uh, some NICUs will actually do a chromatocrit to determine how many kilocalories are in that fatty milk and then they engineer the baby's feeds with using fatty milk for mom instead of using a milk-based um, milk formula fortifier. Okay, thank you. Um, the second question I have is, you know, if the mother is going through a, a period of time where um, she may um, decrease her frequency of um, of breastfeeding, um, for example, if she's traveling or um, going returning to work and, and has a period of time um, where she may not be um, breastfeeding or pumping as frequently, um, how difficult would it be um, for her to, you know, um, get that milk supply back up again, you know, once that period of time is complete? It more challenging than kind of the initial um, period of, of main, you know, um, developing the milk supply, or are there special things that a mother should do, you know, um, to make sure that she maintains that supply during during a period of temporary um, decrease in, in frequency? A uh, good question, and this really has to do with when the baby is born and mom's uh, natural hormonal um, support to make breast milk. In the very beginning, between six and eight weeks, um, the mother is flooded with many, many hormones that uh, help establish milk supply. So the most important period to do breast stimulation and milk expression, either with the baby or the pump, is the first several weeks of life. The further out you get from birth, your body is more dependent upon stimulation than the hormonal support that comes naturally after birth. So if mom starts to see that she's decreasing her milk supply, first thing I have her do is look at her lifestyle. Can she put pumpings in on other times of the day? We kind of call it reverse cycling, where if the mom can't pump at work or she's traveling and she's on the road and she can't pump, she pumps more in the evening that before she goes to bed and maybe wake up once in the middle of the night and try to get a morning pump in. Those are times when prolactin, the milk-making hormone, is highest. And even as she's getting out past the two or three months, prolactin still spikes when you stimulate the breast and empty the breast. So look at your lifestyle. Make sure you're pumping enough. You may be pumping besides just expressing the milk, pumping for future milk. So you have to kind of change your mindset. And again, make sure you're using the, the correct breast pump and that you're using it the way that you would like to use it, either maximizing milk supplies or just maintaining some. Okay. 
Um, and we do have a question in um, from Linda Watson from um, Georgetown University Hospital. Um, she Her question is that she uh, tells her moms not to pump less than eight times um, every 24 hours the first two weeks um, rather than six. So she wanted to know um, when or, or how would you decide on pumping six hours um, in, in 24 hours, and are these babies also breastfed? I agree with Linda. If we can have the mom pump at least eight times a day for those initial weeks, that would be um, optimal. Uh, I think you have to see whether mom has lactated before, because she has successful breastfeeding. Does she have any health problems that interfere um, with the ability to make milk? If she's so overwhelmed with the whole entire situation, and you say, oh, you need to pump eight to ten times a day, she may go, I can't handle that. So then we, we negotiate what is best for her, and I would like, ideally, to start with six. Okay, great. So if there are no other questions, um, then I think we will go ahead and end the session. Actually, we do have another question um, um, from Cassie. She says that her NICU won't let her try to breastfeed until her son is at an adjusted age of 34 weeks. He's at an adjusted age of 32 weeks now and sucks really well on a pacifier. What would you suggest for her to do? First of all, I would ask uh, one of the staff members that you are pretty friendly with, what are their objections to uh, putting a 34-weeker or adjusted age um, to uh, either breast or even skin to skin? Um, is it because um, they're just uncomfortable? Is there a lack of education? Um, I think you just have to see um, where they're coming from and then meet them part way, um, bringing in research saying that early babies can go skin to skin. If the baby is not on respiratory support, um, like CPAP or a vent, then they're probably going to be more willing to put this baby on your chest. And all you have to do is just slide the baby down. We're not talking about breastfeeding at this point for feeding. We're looking at breastfeeding so that baby becomes acquainted with you and sucks a little bit, licks the nipple, um, you know, gets a couple of droplets of milk. Uh, those are really good experiences for you and the baby. Reframe the breastfeeding, again, as not a feeding session, but practice. And maybe they'll be more willing uh, to do that. And again, if they want to feed the baby first and then you put the baby skin to skin afterwards so the baby's not too tired, maybe in their mind, then that would be a good time to, um, to do this attempt. I encourage you not to give up and just take it one small step at a time. Start maybe with lots of skin to skin and then say, okay, can I have this baby to at least lick the nipple? Great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, I don't see any other further questions, so um, with that, I think we will go ahead and end the session. I, again, uh, appreciate everyone's time, and thank you very much for joining today's session. I hope you found it very informative, and I invite you again to visit uh, Pebbles of Hope's website at www.pebblesofhope.org um, to learn more about us, and we will be um, hosting uh, our four other sessions, or three other sessions, sorry, um, during the month of November, so I encourage you um, to look for those and, and to sign up as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.